about 12 or 13, my cousin was getting married. We went to the reception, and I remember joking around with her, and she straight up punched me in the face. I think she punched me in the face because my playfulness was not exactly her idea of playfulness. Well, you know, when you're 12 and 13 years old, you don't expect to be playing around with a lady that's like in her, I think she was 28, 29, and I think I said something that I shouldn't have, and she straight up punched me in the face. I remember I punched her back twice as hard. One of us had cake at that wedding. When I was in middle school, I would get in trouble a lot. And it's not for the usual things, like starting fights, or like cheating on homework. I got in trouble because chewing gum in class was not allowed, and that wasn't exactly explained by the teacher. So, by the time I finished middle school, I had more detentions than my brother, who was far worse than myself. And by worse, I mean he would pay others to do his homework. I remember sitting in detention with that specific teacher one day, and she told me that chewing gum will never amount to anything. But I showed her, I put gum in her chair. And then on top of that, I spat gum in her hair. So when I moved into the small town of Brandon in Northeast Iowa, I was a rambunctious little child. Uh, I met a couple of people. We would go on bike rides, but me and these two kids didn't always get along. I remember one day after doing a little race, we had a little fight and I started choking him out and he pulled a knife on me. I, he stabbed me in the thigh, upper thigh. Um, I still have the scar and in response, because of my little rambunctiousness, I pulled a knife on him as well and I stabbed him two times in the stomach. I remember it was a brother and sister and it was the brother that I stabbed and I remember the sister taking him down the street to their grandparents' house. No files were charged against me, so. No charges were filed against me. God, where is it hard? I was about six, seven, no. I moved there when I was about 10. Yeah, I was about 10 or 11. Well, to this day, I still carry a knife on me, so, because I don't trust people. I don't know. It takes me a while to warm up to anyone. Underneath my happy exterior is darkness and loneliness, according to my therapist. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm on a new medicine, so. I was getting ready to leave for boot camp and I was moving out of my apartment and my roommate didn't want to live there anymore either. So he was gonna go his own way. So we were drinking one afternoon and hanging out and our, another buddy of ours came over and I made a side reference to throwing baloney on a girl's ass. And he said he could make it happen. I think it was his ex-girlfriend. She comes over and she was all about it, all optimistic about it. We were just like, whoa, okay. So my roommate went to the store to go get some baloney. He got about three or four packages of baloney, came back make sure it worked and I grabbed a piece and threw it on the ceiling and it stuck so that was a little more hilarious. So next thing you know she bends over, takes her pants off and just her ass is sticking right out and yeah we started just launching the baloney and tossing it and throwing it and it was all sticking and next thing you know there's about three like maybe a couple layers of baloney over her ass and my roommate's cat came up and started eating it. That was a little wild. There was one night, another friend of mine and I were getting getting drunk. We were just getting wasted, man. We were trash. Can't remember where we were at. But it's about four o'clock in the morning. We're about a block or two away from the Hardee's. So my buddy's like, hey, man, I got a weird question to ask you. It's like, what's that? Because, uh, yeah, we didn't have any money. We spent our money on beer. Go figure. So he was like, hey, dude, you got to give up your socks. And I was like, for what? And he was like, I can get us some food. 
over here at Hardy's, but I got you got to give up your socks. And I'm like, why the hell do I got to give up my socks? So the story goes, I guess the guy, there's a guy that worked there who likes to jack off in socks. I don't know, that was like his thing. So I told him, fuck you, I'm not giving up my socks. He was like, come on, bro. And I'm like, no, I'm not giving up my fucking socks, man. No way. So he takes his socks off. And he balls them up. And he walks up into the drive through line and goes to that little side door there. Guy comes out, hands him a uh, bag with some burgers in it, and he hands over that ball of socks. And we walked away with some burgers. And needless to say, I really didn't feel like eating much after that. All right, so one night, the night before Halloween, I decided to go to the bar. I really didn't have anything planned, so I just ended up going there by myself. It wasn't that packed at all. There was only me, a couple other people. So there's this girl sitting by herself or whatever, and we just started talking, you know, hanging out. And then once the, we closed down the bar, and she asked me if I wanted to go back to her place to smoke some weed. I was like, sure, yeah, let's go do it get there you know it's about 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning so we get in there and we start you know she busts out the bowl and we start smoking no big deal and her cat jumps up on the counter so next thing you know this girl pulls out some magic markers and starts drawing different lines on the cat different color lines and drawing on the cat and I was like what the hell are you doing she was like, I'm just, you know, drawing on the cat. I was like, you gonna clean him up afterwards? Like, what's going on? Is this normal? And she's like, oh, he, you know, he'll clean himself up. And I'm just thinking, all right, immediately. Wow, okay, this, yeah, I didn't expect this. So the cat jumps off the counter there and it just, you know, he takes off running. I really don't see him for the rest of the night. So at this point, I'm already planning my exit. So, good thing too, because she takes a marker and she starts lighting it on fire in her kitchen. So, she's lighting the magic marker in her kitchen on fire. And the bathroom is kind of near the front door right there. And I was like, right, you know, I gotta use the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. And I just kept walking right out that front door. I probably couldn't even tell you what she looks like now. We were both drunk. And then we were both high. And then she starts drawing on her cat and burning magic markers in her kitchen and it was time to leave at that point. I just hope that cat's still alright. I met some weird motherfuckers, man. There were some characters.